Hello, it's been a while. <laughs> I actually started doing this video back in 2020, but I've just been so busy with commissions and things that I haven't had time to finish it until now. Or well, that's my excuse anyway, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so today's video is going to be about personas and creating personas. I think it's fair to say that they're a fairly big part of the fandom, or at least they can be quite important to individuals within the furry fandom. So I wanted to do a tip video on creating a persona you can connect with. For years that's something I struggled with, and I know quite a few people in the fandom who have the same issue, and it can be frustrating. <laughs> Luckily I did eventually manage to design a persona that I have a really strong connection with, his name is V, and you can see me drawing his most recent reference sheet here. So I wanted to share a few things that helped me when I was trying to create a persona that I could stick with long term. Firstly, in case anyone watching is completely new to the fandom, or you've ended up on the furry side of YouTube by accident and don't know what I'm talking about, fursona is a play on the word persona and refers to an animal character, which can be feral or anthro, that a person uses to represent themselves, usually by having shared physical and or personality traits. They're often associated with the furry fandom, but not everyone who has a fursona identifies as a furry, and not every furry has a fursona. So, I should also quickly add, this video is more focused on creating a fursona yourself, but of course, the alternative is buying a pre-made design or commission someone else to design your persona for you. And hopefully some of what I say will be applicable to choosing a pre-made design or to figuring out what to ask for in a commission. If you're currently very unhappy with your own art or designs, then personally I would recommend using a design someone else has made. If you're in a place with your art where you're highly critical of it, like I know as an artist you're always a bit critical of your work, but you know what I mean, where if everything you draw you're like picking up loads of faults and you just don't like anything, then there's a good chance you won't connect to a persona that you create yourself because you'll perceive faults in it like you do with the rest of your art. That was actually part of the trouble I was having a few years ago. I was still trying to figure out my style and what direction I wanted to go in with my art. And I was constantly unhappy with my work, including designs, um, which meant I would lose interest very quickly in designs I created. And for a while, I didn't really have a persona at all for that reason. But if you're going to use a design by someone else as your persona, take your time in finding the right design. <laughs> Like, once I'd given up trying to design one myself, I sort of jumped in to try and to find a design without really knowing what I wanted, which meant I still didn't connect to any of the designs I purchased. And like with anything, sometimes it's just a question of patience. You might not know what you really are looking for in a design until you see it, which is what happened to me. Um, the design I was using before I created V... Um, as soon as I saw that design, I knew that was the design that fitted me at that time and that it'd make a good fursona for me. So the perfect design is almost certainly out there. Sometimes it can just take a while to find it. Similarly, if you're going to commission an artist to do a custom design for you, it may be best to wait until an artist you really love has commissions open or saving up to commission a specific artist rather than immediately just trying to commission someone who happens to be open or who is cheaper than another artist. Because if you really love the work of the artist you're commissioning, I think it's easier to connect to the design they're creating for you. Because you already have that like love for their style and their work anyway. And it's best to try and have some idea of what you actually want before you commission any artist. Because personas are such personal characters and a representation of you rather than, you know, the artist, 
the more input you have, the better. <laughs> so when it comes to deciding what you want in a fasona, one of the first things you're probably going to think about is what species you'd like it to be. Obviously, you can have a fasona that's a hybrid of multiple species, or if you're indecisive like me, you could give your fasona more than one form. Obviously, on the ref here that I'm drawing, you can see V has four forms, but he, well, he actually has seven in total because I'm just that indecisive. <laughs> Or, of course, you could have multiple separate personas, which I also do. I actually have four personas in total, but V is the main one. But with your sticking to just one species or using several, actually choosing the species can be quite important and quite difficult. And I highly recommend picking an animal or animals that you already have some sort of connection with. For example, V's main form is a European adder, because I love snakes. <laughs> but I've always felt a particular connection to European adders, or black adders as we call them around here, above other snakes, because I live on a farm and I had a lot of encounters with them as a child. So choosing an animal that's related to you in some way, either through childhood experience like mine, or maybe an animal you had as a pet, I mean, it's not entirely a coincidence that a lot of people have dog or cat personas. It's because they're animals we commonly interact with and have personal connections to already. Or you could just choose an animal that you felt passionately about for a long time. Be mindful, however, of choosing animals that you've just suddenly developed an interest in. By which I mean... I'm sure we've all done this. <laughs> when you see pictures of an animal that you maybe weren't really aware of before and you're instantly like, oh my god, that's my new favourite animal. I love it. I've got to make a character of it right away. Um, and sure, uh, make, you know, just an OC of one. But maybe give it a bit more time before deciding to use it to represent you. Because it might just be a face. Like that excitement of finding a new animal but then you may also find you lose interest just as quickly or you may still like the animal but not necessarily feel it's connected to you in some way that's what happened to me a while back I saw a photo of a marbled polecat and I was like wow that's the best animal ever that's what my persona should be then I proceeded to design one, and then about a week later I was like, yeah, they're cool, but they're not really me, and I sold the design. So so maybe just give it a week or so when you fall in love with a new animal, just see if it sticks. And also try drawing it, like not actually designing a character of that animal, but just test out how well you can draw the anatomy and things, because I'm all for people having unique fasona species and for people expanding the types of animals that they can draw. But if you're really going to struggle with the anatomy at first, maybe hold off on using that animal as your fasona. Uh, you can always make another character or another fasona later on of that species. But if you're really going to have a hard time drawing the character, you're probably not going to connect with it that well. Obviously, if you're having trouble deciding on just one type of animal and don't want to have more than one persona, or you don't want to have multiple forms of the same design, you could mix the species and have a hybrid. But what about if you really can't settle on even one species that'll fit you? You could, of course, ask friends what animal they think represents you, or you could do what I used to do and try taking some quizzes. <laughs> Uh, I'm only slightly ashamed to admit that I spent a lot of time doing personality quizzes when I was a kid, just because I like doing them, <laughs> but seriously, they can be quite useful when deciding what animal you might be. Even if you don't get a result that you feel fits you totally, it might give you some idea of what general type of animal might work for you as a fasona, or it might help with some other aspect of the design. For example... I took the Patronus quiz on Pottermore a while back and I got a magpie and 
I do actually have a secondary Sona with a magpie form, but I also kind of incorporated it when making V, in that he has wings and this, you know, black and white colour scheme. <laughs> so yeah, if you're really stuck for a species or just general ideas, maybe try taking a couple of quizzes and see what you get. <laughs> Going back to colour schemes, obviously you may not necessarily want to use the natural colours and markings of whichever animal or animals that you choose. So you could try basing it on colours you associate with already yourself instead. By which I don't necessarily mean your favourite colour schemes. For example, I love blue and pink, like together, but they wouldn't really suit me for a fasona because I don't really wear or own anything blue or pink. Um, instead, I do wear a lot of black and a lot of objects in my room and things I own are darker coloured. And I'm quite pale. So even without the magpie link that I mentioned earlier, black and white are good colours for me to use to represent myself because they're colours that feature heavily in my life already. And then I went on to use pink and blue in the accessories and the accents of my persona. So they work, you know, just as extra things and then have the main colour scheme as colours that already I kind of use to represent myself in real life anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, depending on how much you want your persona to be a representation of you, um rather than just a mascot character, maybe think about what colours play a role in your life, uh, whether that's the colour of your clothing, or your hair colour, or just the general colour of things you own, and base the design on those, rather than solely going for colours that you just like. <laughs> whether you're using your persona as more of just a mascot or whether you're actually wanting something that represents you you're probably going to want to be able to draw it fairly regularly or at least commission artwork from others reasonably regularly so like i said when it comes to choosing a species that you want to choose one you're able to draw without too much trouble you also want the design itself to be easy to draw now, obviously, if you're someone who absolutely loves complex designs and enjoys drawing them, then go for it. Do something really complex. But if you're like me, and I think a lot of others, and don't really enjoy regularly drawing highly complex designs, it's better to have a fairly low to medium complexity persona. If you do design something more complex, and I speak from experience, you may find that although you initially love the design, after the novelty of it has worn off, you don't actually want to draw it that much. And if you're like me, maybe you feel bad asking others to draw it because it takes up that much more time to colour the markings. So you lose the feeling of connection through lack of using the design. And of the personas I've had, the ones I've connected to best have always been the ones I found easiest to draw. Designing is hard. Personally, I think it's one of the hardest things to do as an artist, even simpler designs. And in fact, in some ways, simple designs can be harder to make, as you're more limited in ways you can make them unique. So don't give up if you don't come up with the perfect design right away. <laughs> it took me several attempts to get V's design right. As you can see here, for example, this was V's first design um you can see i sort of knew what i wanted the first attempt i wanted a snake with wings i wanted sort of black color scheme and then later on when i tried redesigning him i wanted uh still a snake with wings but i wanted it to be able to translate into a dog form as well um but it still wasn't quite right and it was only after asking people for some constructive criticism and playing around a bit with inverting the colours and things like that that I landed on V's final design. And you can see his old ref um, 
the design hasn't changed much since this. I've just updated the reference sheet. Um, yeah, <laughs> his basic design hasn't changed since I landed on this. But don't be afraid to ask others for ideas. Or just keep playing around and swapping colours and removing markings and things like that. It can take a while to get it right. So please don't feel despondent if it doesn't go how you want right away. You will get there. It just, it may take time. <laughs> but have faith in yourself. I'm sure you can produce the design you want if you keep trying. Just stick at it. <laughs> Obviously, you may find in the end that having just one persona isn't for you. Maybe you can't fit everything you want in terms of personality as well as the design itself into just one design. We're all complex after all and one design might not work for you all the time. Like sometimes you might feel something dark and edgy fits you best and other times you might want to represent yourself with a cute and soft design. Or perhaps having a persona specifically for venting and a more general one might work for you. So try thinking about what traits and aspects of yourself you want in your persona. Um, if you find they don't all fit together nicely in one design, then maybe separate each trait out and design a persona specifically a around one trait, rather than trying to base it around you as a whole. For a long time, I tried to have just one persona and... I ended up having to have several secondary personas, which to be fair I don't use that often, but I have them there for me when I want a design representing other parts of myself. And then I have a main persona with multiple forms, and I'm connected to all of them, but in a slightly different way, because they represent slightly different aspects of who I am, and that works better for me than trying to have just one persona. So maybe try having more than one if you're really struggling to fit everything into one design and finally not to get too deep after all this is only a video about fictional animal characters um but having said that personas are quite important to a lot of people i know mine are to me and they can be a good form of expression or comfort so though i agree this isn't a particularly serious or important video i guess in the grand scheme of things the idea of personas and people's connection to them certainly isn't something to be mocked or laughed at because they can mean a lot to some people. But as I said, not to get too deep, um, if you're not in a good place in your life right now, if you're not who you want to be or there are aspects of yourself you really don't like, you don't have to include them in your persona. You can leave them out. Or instead of designing a persona based on who you are right now, though you could certainly do that as well, create one based on who you want to be. Obviously, this may be more applicable to the personality traits than the actual design, but as you design them and use them, try seeing them as an ideal version of yourself. That's what I did. Back when I was creating V, um, like this version of him, I was still very insecure about myself, and to be honest, I was quite an angry person, and <laughs> up until that point my personas had all been the same like the same as me um but with V I always imagined him as representing who I wanted to be not who I was and thankfully I feel I've kind of reached that point for real in myself now and honestly I think creating V in that way helped me a lot because it forced me to really think about who I actually wanted to be and start to move away from the rut I'd been in mentally and emotionally and I think, though I like his design itself, the fact he represents something very important to me and was something to aspire to, that is the biggest reason I connect so strongly to him. I've had him several years now, and I feel every bit as strongly connected to him now as I did when I first created him. Like, that connection hasn't worn away even long after the novelty of a new design had worn off. Um, which had always been the case with my personas before. So yeah, maybe that's something to think about when creating your own persona. And also as a way to help yourself um, move forward in your life, think about who you want to be, not just who you are right now. <laughs> anyway, I think that's all the points I wanted to make. If you feel there's something I should have added, feel free to leave it in the comments. Uh, if you've watched this far, 
or even if you haven't, <laughs> thank you. Hopefully there won't be such a long gap between this video and the next. Um, I wish you all the best and if you're currently or soon to be in the process of creating your persona, good luck. I hope you end up with something you really do connect with. So, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye!